Maybe you're looking at shared ownership as a way onto the property ladder. There are some pros and cons with shared ownership mortgages and properties. On this video, we're gonna be looking at those as well as the critical areas you must be aware of. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Alex Kerr. I'm a qualified mortgage broker. And on this channel, we bring mortgage tips to first time buyers and business owners. At any point during this video, please feel free to check out the show notes for a description and a recap on everything in this video. Let's jump into the video. So as I mentioned, shared ownership has pros and cons. Let's have a look at the cons of shared ownership first. So initially, you're only gonna own a percentage, typically starting at 25%. Okay, with the remainder, you're gonna pay a rent. We'll come on to that in a little while. You're going to need to pay, as well as a rent, service charge and annual ground rent. Okay, that's gonna be, as well as everything else, your mortgage payment and your rent. You're restricted to shared ownership properties only. Okay, so when you look for your properties on Rightmove or Zoopla or on the market or wherever you're looking at them, the shared ownership website from the government, you can only look at shared ownership properties only. Shared ownership properties, they're not in every location. Obviously, location is a critical condition or critical area when you're looking for properties that you know you're going to want to really it's going to be high up on your list you want to get the location right obviously that is another downside to shared ownership you know you're restricted to where they are and you're restricted to the housing association rules okay so when you buy a shared ownership property it's going through a housing association who manage the property who charge the rent the ground rent the service charges okay now their terms and conditions are going to stipulate what you can and can't do it's very very important to look through those terms and conditions i will be coming to that in the critical list area okay so we've looked at the the downside um, of course, there are many positives to shared ownership. It could enable you to get onto the property ladder where before you wouldn't have had an option. So that can be used as a stepping stone, which is fantastic because typically buying a lower share, 25%, and then paying a rent on a property the same price, if you are buying it outright, could overall lead in a lower monthly payment, meaning that your affordability is improved. As I just briefly mentioned, it can be used as a stepping stone to your next property. So over time, you know, your wages or salary may, may increase. If you're single at the moment, you may, may meet someone, a partner, and therefore, you know, move on to the next property. And in the meantime, even though you own a small share, you know, in theory, you're reducing the mortgage debt so your equity is increasing all the time, meaning you'll have a better deposit for the next property. There's a lot of choice with mortgage lenders. There's a lot of mortgage lenders who will do shared ownership mortgages. A lot of the high street lenders will do this and you're also not penalized with a mortgage rate. There are some fantastic rates equivalent of the lowest rates on the market. Sometimes you can purchase more of a percentage later on down the line. So if you own a small percentage, 25%, and then later on you're in a better position to purchase more, you could then increase your share to 50%, sometimes more. And the overall goal is to, to own a property outright, whether it's this one or your next one. And the term used for buying an extra share later on down the line off of the housing association is called staircasing. I'll come on to that again in the critical list area because it's a term you've got to check that exists. Very important that you're allowed to do that. Shared ownership properties also apply to new builds. So in fact, if you're buying or looking at a new build for shared ownership, you can borrow up to 95% of the share you're looking to borrow. 
So if you're starting off at 25% share, it's a new build, all right, it's gonna be a lot less finding 5% of 25% than 5% of the 100%. So again, the deposit you need to put down is lower, and that does apply to flats and houses, okay? There's one or two lenders that will lend 95% of the share on new build, irrelevant of it being a house or a flat. Now that doesn't apply if it's not a new build, okay? You would need to put a bit more of a deposit down. The loan to value restrictions will be uh, provided by the lender. It's a critical area, so do remember to check that with your mortgage lender. So in the show notes, I am going to hook up a critical list, a shared ownership critical list. If you're considering shared ownership properties, please check it out, download it and take it with you, okay, because it will allow you to go one by one what I feel my critical list of areas is that you need to check that applies to the shared ownership properties that you're looking at. So double check with the shared ownership or the housing association um, that everything we're gonna go through now, um, coming on to in a second, is in existence. If it isn't, I would move on or seriously question the housing association. Okay, so let's go into the list. So first and most obviously, how much is the rent? Okay, how much is the rent to rent the remaining share from the housing association. Is it fixed? Does it increase? Double check those terms. Secondly, how much is the service charge? Okay, they will charge a service charge and an also what's called an annual ground rent, okay, for their management services to that property. They will have a certain responsibility to the area and you will be leasing the remainder from the housing association. Double check, so double check how much the ground rent is and the service charge. Okay, so that combined with the rent, those three areas will provide a monthly payment. You'll have to factor that in with your mortgage payment uh, and when you're considering your affordability. So critical areas. Staircasing, can you buy an extra percentage later on down the line? To me, that is massively important. I inform all my clients to only buy properties where you can staircase, because the last thing you wanna do is buy a share, and then for whatever reason, not be able to buy another, a larger share later on, okay? Because then you're restricted, your growth within the property ladder is restricted, you can't reduce your capital, thus leading to more equity, okay? Double check staircasing, really, really important. What that means is you can buy a bigger share later on, whether it's a 50, 75% or 100%. That is the ideal scenario. You are allowed to buy up to 100% of the share. Okay, make sure the mortgage lender allows shared ownership. All right, really, really important because not every product is applicable to shared ownership. It's very important your mortgage lender understands that it's a shared ownership. And also, whether it's a traditional property or a new build, again, criteria is different and it's not obvious on the mortgage lender. Okay, on their websites and things like that, they tend to have one set of criteria. Um, however, for a new build, it can be different. Very important that you speak with your bank or your broker, make sure that's covered off. Okay, so the last area is documentation that you should receive from the estate agent and the housing association. You will need what's called an MOS, a memorandum of sale from your estate agent or whoever you're buying the property from because the mortgage lender will need that. That will supply them with critical information such as uh, confirmation of the purchase price, the share you're buying. Then you will also need 
the shared ownership papers from the housing association. This will provide the mortgage lender with a detailed breakdown of the costs and the terms of conditions, such as your ground rent, your rent, your service charges. This will all be factored into the affordability of the mortgage. It will also show any other areas and terms and conditions that must align with the mortgage lender's criteria. Okay, very important you get those documents early on following your purchase. So as a recap, remember, download the show notes. There's a big list of everything we've uh, gone through today. You can download that, take that with you, and you know, ask any questions to your estate agent and your housing association. Make sure everything is good. Question of the day. Are you considering shared ownership properties at the moment? Have you got any questions regarding today's video? Please let me know in the comments. So thank you so much for checking out today's video. I hope you find it useful. If this is the first time we're meeting, please consider subscribing or ringing the bell. I promise to bring you videos on a weekly basis, whatever stage you are at your journey. First time buyers will need to remortgage after buying their first house. Business owners, you may consider buy to let investments. I will pro be providing tips for every single stage. Until next time, Mortgage Chain are bringing the best mortgage tips to first time buyers and business owners. Keep smashing it and we will talk soon.